Live from KSAT 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. It's almost here. There are just about six hours left of 2019 and people across the city are getting ready to ring in the new year. We'll talk about your New Year's Eve forecast and take a look at how some people are celebrating. That's just in a few minutes. But first, we want to get you out to some breaking news on the north side. San Antonio police have shut down Blanco Road just north of Oblate while they investigate a shooting there. A man in his 60s shot in the arm while driving through the intersection in a silver Mustang. Officers say a woman in her 60s was also in the Mustang but was not hit. Police say the Mustang and a suspect in a red Toyota were going in the same direction when a gunman fired at the car. The gunman then drove off. Investigators are going to the hospital right now to try to speak with that victim. New at six, a good kid with a lust for life. That's how a former coach describes Aiden Hoffman. The 19 year old former Madison High School football player was found shot after crashing into a barrier near a Whataburger on O'Connor Road early Monday morning. He later died at the hospital. Those coaches tell our Garrett Berger it's a tragic end for a young man they say showed so much promise. Aiden Hoffman was not just another guy. He was a beacon in our community. A young man they can't say enough good things about. He always maintained a good relationship with people, even on, uh, on different walks of life. And Byron Ledbetter and Calvin Robertson coached and trained Aiden Hoffman during his time playing seven-a-side football in high school and kept in touch with him and his family after. They remember Hoffman as a player with good work ethic and good leadership. No matter what, his smile shined brightly, his, his leadership shined brightly. A good player who made himself great, and now who won't get to see the fruits of his hard work. He was back in town from college, you know. He worked to get that scholarship. It wasn't like he was a kid that, uh, you know, had the size and had the ability. He worked to get the scholarship. But they hope something can come from his death, that perhaps it can be a reason to stop gun violence in the community. And I feel like this, this, this census act needs to stop, and I want his life to be something more than just, oh, a statistic. He needs to be somebody that this event was tragic, but something positive needs to come out of this. A candlelight vigil is planned for 8 o'clock tonight at the Whataburger on O'Connor Road, where Hoffman was found. People attending are urged to wear orange or Madison Mavericks gear. I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. Other top stories we're following this evening. San Antonio police searching for a suspect in a northeast side robbery. This happened overnight on the Circle K on Austin Highway, not far, not far from Perrin Vital Road. According to officers, a man in a gray hoodie and khaki pants walked into the store and pointed a gun at the clerk. He then ran off. The man was able to get away with some cash, but it's unclear how much. A man hospitalized after losing control and crashing his car into a median this morning. This all happening around 2.30 on I-37 southbound near Pecan Valley Drive. That man was sent to Brook Army Medical Center in serious condition, and traffic was temporarily shut down in that area as a result of the crash. We still don't know what caused that man to lose control of his car. To many people, a front door camera might seem like a simple thing, but for domestic violence survivors who are still living in constant danger, it could be life-saving. Over the last three months, Bear County Sheriff's deputies have installed free ring security cameras for nine survivors. One of those survivors tells us it will not only give them peace of mind, but also the ability to strengthen a legal case against an abuser. It's part of our series confronting domestic violence, loving and fear. This sound, a sense of safety for someone living in fear and not just of strangers. Just to hear a knock at the door is uneasy sometimes. This woman is a domestic violence survivor who we're not identifying for her safety. She heard the Bear County Sheriff's Office was installing free ring security systems for abuse and stalking survivors. So she reached out to Rosalinda Ibron Panera at Bear County's Victim Services. It's an app that you actually download to the phone. They can share it with their children. They can share it with family members. Other people can see that somebody else came to their house. Okay. Stalking victims especially, they're not actually coming to their house, but they're driving by to see if they're home so that they can look for them or they can follow them around. So having the ring system is huge. This is my home where I'm raising my children, so it's definitely a peace of mind. They're 11 and 12 now, so um, they can load it up on their phones too. Advocates say this type of system not only provides peace of mind, but a deterrent to perpetrators. This is a wonderful idea. Any abuser and victim should remember that when there is a protective order in place, ringing the doorbell is a violation and the victim should report it. 
the abuser can be arrested. This whole face will come off and it's just going to be this the part. Mouth. This right here is going to give me some liberty again. I'm not going to have that sense of uncertainty. It's like, who was it at the door? And ask my neighbor, did you see who it was? She said she would never have been able to afford the system and feels grateful for the free installation, training, and even home security assessment. Thank you so um, much yeah. for your service. You're very welcome. <laughs> Such a great program. Unfortunately, the sheriff's office does not have an endless supply of these ring systems, and that's why they're specifically vetting requests, only giving systems to those who cannot afford it and also feel like they're in immediate danger. If you fit that description, reach out to Victim Services at 210-335-6070 or email voices at bear.org. We also have a full list of domestic violence resources on our website. You can always go to ksat.com slash domestic violence. Sales at fireworks stands in the area are brisk as New Year's Eve celebrations are about to get underway in spite of the fact that it is still illegal to shoot fireworks off inside San Antonio city limits. Here's a case in point, the giant Alamo fireworks store just outside Loop 1604. Very busy today from little sparklers to firecrackers to those big multi-burst items. The fireworks are going fast and with each sale at each of the company's 300 stores and stands comes a quick safety speech. Things like keep water nearby, don't shoot fireworks in areas where there's dry grass, you know, common sense stuff. We just want to remind them to practice their fireworks safety and um, make sure that they are um, keeping in mind all of the things that they need to do in order to enjoy these fireworks safely with their family. That is the goal. And she says a reminder that the weather is perfect for celebrations tonight, which means that the shopping should be done fairly early if you haven't done it yet. They're still open, but uh, you might be losing out on some of the bigger items because they're going fast. Yes, they are. And there are New Year's Eve events happening across the city, including at Hemisphere, where the San Antonio Parks Foundation is hosting Celebrate SA. It's always a big time out there. Jaffney Gray is there right now. And Jaffney, what's the crowds like out there? Yes, guys, the crowds are large and in charge. It's been super fun and exciting just seeing so many families come out as we head into the new year. And families who are just not from here, but from all over, coming to celebrate with Military City USA. I mean, just take a look behind me. You'll notice how many fun activities are taking place as we speak. Now, if you do come out, you'll be able to enjoy music, a carnival, giveaways, food, drinks, and so much more. Several people I spoke with say that they're excited about ringing in the new year, each person with their own special meaning as far as what 2020 means to them. 2020 means to me a new opportunity for new beginnings mm -hmm. and a way to look at things a different way and hopefully to prosper in those things. And when you come out, there are some rules that you have to keep in mind. No food or drinks are allowed to be brought inside the event. When you get here, you will notice that there is enough here to keep you full. Also, if you bring a bag or a purse, you are subject to having it searched, which is why the San Antonio Parks Foundation is encouraging your bags be clear. And also, if you're riding around on a scooter, you are not allowed to ride it inside the festival grounds. It is to be parked at the barriers surrounding the event. Now, again, the event is so large, it is expected to bring in at least 70,000 people. It will last until midnight when the big, beautiful firework display will take place. So you definitely do not want to miss that. You have time to come on out. Again, guys, it's a beautiful celebration. I'll have a huge wrap-up of the event tonight at 10. But in the meantime, I'm going to go have myself a funnel cake, and I'll send it back to you guys. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Brings it back for us. AAA Texas is reminding everyone who is of legal drinking age to have a plan to avoid drinking and driving tomorrow night by making a plan to get home before you take your first sip of alcohol. But as a last resort, AAA is offering a free community service called Tipsy Tow. If you find yourself in need, you can call AAA for a free tow and ride home up to 10 miles. Just call 1-800-AAA-HELP. The service will be available starting at 6 and it will go through 6 a.m. Wednesday. Speaking of traffic, let's take a live look outside with time saver traffic. Uh, there's a little bit of a backup here at I-37 in Carolina. For probably a lot of folks headed down there to Hemisphere to ring in the new year for that party, as well as the Alamo Bowl, which is happening in that area as well. Doesn't look too bad, but uh, as folks are exiting there, it is a bit of a backup. So watch out for that if you're out and about right now. Well, it's nice to see that there isn't any weather, though, for all this traffic, because there are tons of events going on in our area, Sarah. Yeah, at least there's not going to be any light rain yet. I do think that tomorrow we will have areas of light rain, especially in the afternoon. But for this evening, 
Temperatures uh, should just be the main issue. It'll be a little chilly as we ring in 2020. Uh, the aquifer is down about two tenths of a foot and some good news in the pollen count. Although mountain cedar is still high, it's down by about 10,000 points from yesterday. Mold is low at 480. And taking a look at temperatures right now, this is why you'll want that light jacket. It's just chilly enough to be uh, to need a jacket. 57 in San Antonio, 56 in Bulverde, and 55 up in Comfort. I've got a look at your midnight forecast coming up as well as that rain chance. Courtney.